maybe some were in elementary school, some in junior high, and some in high school, some in college, and for some of you, they were in Sunday school. They differ in a thousand ways, but they have this one in common. Probably, maybe they care about you. They, thank you. They made you feel special and important. And so they made a difference in your life. And you are a better person because you knew them. I was thinking this week, how many teachers I had in my school days. And I guess I had more than a couple dozens of teachers at school and in Sunday school. And I, I was amazed at myself, um, actually the capacity of my memory, that I still remember most of them. How they looked, their hairstyle, clothing style, their names, and their personalities. Let me ask you, raise up your hands if you don't mind. How many of you remember your teacher when you're a first grader at your primary school? A lot of you. How many people in this room remember your kindergarten teacher? That's awesome. How many of you went to kindergarten? <laughs> oh, a lot of them. How many of you remember your daycare teacher? Oh, Hannah, you remember them. It's great. Yeah, I also remember because pre I'm pretty young, I think. I'm three, three years old, so I remember them very clearly. Most of the teachers in grade school, I remember them. But a strange fact is, in all of my years of growing up, though I must have taken hundreds and hundreds of classes and lessons, I can't remember a single lesson from those years. Nothing comes to my mind. I know I was there in the classroom, and the teachers gave us a great lessons very hard, but the lessons are gone from memory. Here's the real strange part. I can't remember my lessons, but I can forget my teachers. I remember who they were pretty much. What about you? Even if you don't remember their names, many of you may remember who they were, their looks, their tempers, their personalities, their characters, their voice, or their unique gestures. Something like that, right? Here's the truth about teachers. Children learn more from who you are than from what you teach. Children learn more from who you are than from what you speak. Children are watching their teachers in the class, and they are always ready to learn. Here's a funny story about a pastor and a little boy. A pastor was building a deck. And every day, a little neighborhood boy came by and watched it, everything he did. The pastor said, are you watching me so you can learn how to build a deck? And the boy said, no, I'm waiting to hear what kind of words you will say when you hit your thumb with a hammer. <laughs> Children are watching, and they are ready to learn and copy you. I love this um, that kids come up with. One day, a Sunday school teacher asked our class, why it was so important to be quiet in the church, ser church worship service. One bright little girl replied, because people are sleeping. <laughs> we all need to, aware, need to be aware of that. Children are watching adults around them, and they learn from your behavior and your verbal styles. Think about this. Your children spend the best hours of every day in the class at school, and they are influenced by their teachers. And a man named Henry Brooks Adam, a great educator and a historian, once said, a teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. Whether you believe it or not, it is true that children are watching you and learning and being influenced from who you are and what you do. And the Bible gives us a lesson about this in today's passage. Take a look at the next screen. The Bible says, In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, in your speech, show integrity 
and soundness of speech. I think that a teacher is like a light of a watchtower that guides us through to the right path. Whether you are a parent or teacher, mentor, coach, or an instructor, it must be remembered this. The average teacher just tells. The good teacher explains. The great teacher demonstrates. And the best teacher inspires with their life and their character. And it makes a great impact on their lives. And I want you to remember this today's title, Teaching is Touching a Life Forever. To teach is to touch a life forever. The purpose of true education is not to fill the minds of students with knowledge and information, but to empower students to discover the truth and their true potential and possibilities about who they are and what they can do, and help them be a better person and be a person that God cre created them to be. That's the true education that's touching a life forever. And it's blessed that we have the greatest teacher who has ever touched so many lives forever. He provided the ultimate role model for any teacher. He walked with them and talked with them. He was interested in individuals, though he always was surrounded by crowd, recognizing the value of each soul. He loved his disciples, his students. You know, his name is Jesus Christ, the greatest teacher that has ever lived on earth. Jesus referred to himself as a teacher. Others called him teacher. And even his enemies recognized him as a teacher. Forty-five times in the gospel, Jesus is referred to as teacher. And then it is no surprise that teaching was an important part of Jesus' ministry. In fact, Christianity is a teaching religion at its heart. Jesus taught everybody, and this is a big deal. He would teach Samaritans. He would teach children. He would teach women. He would teach Gentiles, strangers. And this focus on educating, everyone would change the world. When Jesus was going to leave the earth, he said to his followers in Matthew chapter 28, um, take a look at the next slide. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Therefore, go and make disciples of all peoples and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. His followers took this seriously and they went out to the world and began teaching what they learned from Jesus. We are told in the book of Acts, take a look at the next screen, day by day, day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and it changed the world. They began a process of education. They would teach both men and women for years. In about AD 150, a man named Justin Martyr formed schools in Ephesus and Rome. Now, Rome and Greece valued learning. But at, the, at, the, at that time, Formal education was reserved for only male children of wealthy families, the cultural elite. But the teacher, Jesus' disciples remembered, we followed our teacher, Jesus Christ, who taught everybody. And so they would teach male and female. They would teach slaves and free. And when it comes to Sunday school, in 1780, a Jesus follower named Robert Reyes could not stand the cycle of poverty and ignorance that was destroying little children and eventually destroying a whole generation. He said, the world marches forward on the feet of little children. So he took children who had to work six days a week in squalor. Sunday was their only free day. He said, I'm going to start a school for free to teach them to read and write and learn about God, how good our God is. He did it, and he called it Sunday School. And within 50 years, 
There were 1.5 million children being taught by 160,000 volunteer teachers who had a vision for the education of a new generation in that dark world. Sunday school was one of the greatest educational volunteer triumphs of the world history. Christianity at its heart is a teaching religion. And the church is the community that continues to teach people and our children as Jesus did and continue to learn from God's word. In that sense, Sunday school matters to the church and to the society. When church dies, the world dies. Somebody said, education without God is like a car without a steering wheel. Because Christian education shapes our characters and personalities in God's word and divine wisdom. And it leads us to walk in the light in this broken dark world. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 119 take a look at the next screen. God's word is a lamp onto your feet. It will guide you in dark world. Many times we think of teaching as the transfer of information. The teacher is full of information and the student is an empty container. The teacher pours information into the students like pouring water into an empty jar. But Jesus' teaching was not like that. But his teaching was touching and inspiring and changing their lives. And I strongly believe that Jesus Christ, his power of teaching is at work in our Sunday school. And I pray that his wisdom and power will be with our Sunday school teachers. And may our Sunday school be the place where godly character is formed, strength of clear conscience and sound mind is amplified, and understanding is sharpened. Teachers of God's word are playing a vital role in shaping our inner being. And that eventually will make difference in this world, and this community. I believe when each of us changes in God's word, that world will be changed eventually. I want to tell you teachers, all teachers of school and Sunday school teachers, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for your teaching ministry. I'm so proud of you and honor you. You're not only the selfless givers of your times and energy and talents, but also the transformers of life. Do you know, you can really make a lifetime difference on your student's life. When you feed someone a fish, you feed them for a day. But probably, government or nonprofit organization will do it. School and Sunday school and no matter where you are, your teaching place is the beginning point to make the world a better world. And school and the education is irreplaceable with anything in the world. You are teaching them how to fish, and you will feed them lifetime. This is one of the most significant lessons that the Bible says about teaching. Teachers, you are feeding your students for the rest of their lives by teaching. There's a great quote. The only difference between what you are now and what you will be 10 years from now is the people you meet and the books you will read. Teachers, you can be the one who will make a difference in somebody's life by teaching how to fish. Your job is to bless people and touch your life forever. I want you to prize yourself, use your gifts, feed your mind, never stop learning. Unleash your strength. You bear the image of the greatest teacher of all, Jesus Christ. His power and wisdom will lead you and guide you wherever you teach and whenever you teach. May God bless all teachers and all learners of this church. Amen. I want you to join me to the unison prayer for our teachers. Um, 
I want you to remember your teacher or your Sunday school teachers. And if you are a teacher at school, pray for yourself. Go. Dear Lord, thank you for our dedicated teachers, for their inspiration in our lives, for their knowledge and skills, for their commitment to our education. Please bless their work. Lead them as they mentor and train us. Come, equip them as they sow seeds of understanding in our lives. May all our teachers' lives be enriched. Bring strength where there is weariness. Bring rest where there is a tiredness. May they excel in their own abilities and see the potential in each person. May your wisdom and inspiration be their guide every time as they meet and teach. Please help all of us to respect each other, understand one another, and never fail to offer kindness and care. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.